Hello, friends, and welcome back to another installment of Sonic High School. This wonderful story just it just keeps going, doesn't it? This is Chapter 4, Getting a Date. Sonic did like in the first chapter, and went to school again. Now it's lunchtime, and Sonic was in the lunch room. Sonic was telling all of the people at his table, who were Tails, Knuckles, Shadow, Espio, and Charmy B, about what did happen yesterday, but Tails already knew, so he was nodding his head like a good friend. You should have seen it, said Sonic. I was in the haunted house, and I shot Eggman, but I let him get away right before I could have killed him, said Sonic. Sonic laughed, and Tails laughed at the same time. Knuckles said, You should stop going on these cool adventures because high school is more important, said Knuckles. And Sonic knew he was right, because it's called Sonic High School, and it shouldn't be more about the high school part. So Sonic asked them all what they're up to. Well, I'm entering the science competition, said Tails. To win the science competition, I have to come up with the best invention, and my invention is the invisibility hat. It makes you invisible, but I can't do it right now, so I have to make sure it works perfect for the science competition. Tails was so smart that Sonic knew that he would win the science competition, because Tails is like in steam. Nerd! shouted Knuckles right into Tails' ear. What a bad guy. I'm just hanging out, not going to classes, because I want to cause trouble, said Knuckles. Knuckles was so bad that he would cause trouble. Sonic thought Knuckles was a fuck. <laughs> Shadow was next, and he was badder than Knuckles, but in a different way. I'm not going to be around much longer, said Knuckles. He always did dot 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 at the end of what he was saying, because it was mysterious. Where are you going? said Tails, because he was curious. I'm going to kill my parents, said Shadow. See, this is how Shadow is worse than Knuckles. He did serious bad things. At least at the end of the day, Knuckles could sleep. Shadow is too dark for that. I'm going to try out for the football team, said Espio. Espio was athletic like Sonic, but not as fast. And he had a horn on his nose that was good for attacking people in front of him. So Sonic thought he would be good at the football. I'm going to try out for the play, said Charmy Bee. Charmy Bee was loud and singing always. You're an annoying- Oh no! So you should do great, said Knuckles. Do not hurt my feelings, said Charmy. Charmy was used to being hectored, so he was able to remove himself from his potent fury. Did you see Rouge just now? said Espio. She's looking so hot in her tiny bra. Espio obviously wanted to kiss her deep. You should ask her out, said Sonic. But the prom was yesterday, said Espio. Well, that is okay. You can date any time, said Sonic. Oh, said Espio. Well, then I'm going to kiss and sex her tonight. Espio was like a little boy looking at his mom's boob for the first time. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Sonic and Tails together were both looking at each other, and they wanted to help Espio. We are going to help you get a date. date said Sonic and Tails at the same time, simultaneously. And we're gonna, gonna do, do it, it right, right now. now! Said Sonic and Tails. Sonic and Tails got up and both grabbed one of Espio's arms and dragged him across the room. Sonic did most of the dragging because he's stronger. And put him right at Rouge. What is this about? Said Rouge with a questioning sound. She blinked her eyelids quickly, like a race car. What do you want? Why are you here? Espio looked right into her eyes with a passion of a hundred barking dogs and said, Rouge, will you go out with me? Espio was sweating, and there were sweat drops dropping off his hands in front of her. I don't know, said Rouge, and looked at Espio. Rouge gave him a sexy look that made Espio feel in love. Please, Please do, do it. it, said Sonic and Tails together at the same time. Okay. We can go on a date tonight, said Rouge. Sonic and Tails and Espio were stoked and high-fived right there. By the time this night ended, one of them would have done their first sex. Now here's the hard part, 
said Espio. How do I put sex in her without getting in trouble? <laughs> Sonic and Tails looked at each other and thought, Uh-oh! And Espio walked out while holding on to Rouge's boobies because they are now boyfriend and girlfriend, and it is allowed to do it. We're going to go on to the next one because this video is still kind of short. So, Chapter 5, Preparations. It was the end of the day at school, and it was time that Sonic and Tails and Knuckles got back on the bus at the bus stop to board it all the way home from school. We are on the bus now, said Tails. No more classes! Tails was happy, but sad, because he is smart. Sonic and Tails sat down together, and Knuckles sat right in the middle of the aisle, which he usually did not do, but sometimes did when everyone was on the bus. It looked like Espio and Rouge were not on the bus, because they were busy getting ready to go sex tonight, now that they are boyfriend and girlfriend. Knuckles laid across the aisle even more stretched out than when he sat across two seats, because now the limits were the Alpha and the Omega. I don't know what that means. How can we help Espio? said Sonic to Tails. Tails responded, I don't know, and thought about it on the bus. The bus drove bumpy on the bump fill roads all the way home, and then they all got out at the bus stop that they normally got in the bus at, just like always. Sonic ran out of the bus, then Tails, then Knuckles, in order. Time to go home, said Tails. We're almost there. And they walked the rest of the way home. When they got home, it was dinner time, and Sonic was at a different home from Tails and Knuckles because they were all in different families, so they did not live together. And Sonic's mom made a dinner. Sonic's mom made Chinese food, and Sonic ate it, and at the end there was a fortune cookie, and Sonic broke it open, and he ate the cookie part, but he kept the paper part that was inside that held a magical fortune on it. Sonic looked at the fortune and read it to himself inside of his head. The path to glory begins at the base of your friend's penis. <laughs> I forgot about that part. <laughs> said Sonic inside of his head, reading the fortune cookie paper, and he knew it was a good sign for what was about to happen tonight when Espio and Rouge went to sex. Then the phone ringed. Sonic ran to the phone and picked it up and said, Hello? into it. It was Tails. I have an idea, said Tails on the phone to Sonic, who is listening, but not speaking. I can give Espio my invisibility hat for the science competition, and you can use it to do the sex for Rouge. Sonic smiled so wide like the King of Fire, finding out he burned down New York City with only his fire powers. I have no idea what the fuck that's supposed to mean. <laughs> Sonic and Tails went to Espio's house later, which was not too easy to walk to normally for most people, but Sonic is super fast, so he ran there, and he helped Tails get there too, seeing as Tails is not as fast as Sonic. They knocked on the house, and Espio came out of the door. Here is my invisibility hat that you can use with Rouge tonight to make sex in. It makes it impossible to see and impossible to hear you when you are wearing the hat, or when someone who is wearing the hat wants you to also be impossible to see and impossible to hear, screamed Tails, whose voice was a little hoarse from ordering food with the lunch lady, whose hearing was lost in an earthquake in her childhood. Tails had to say things that he wanted so loud, and she would still say, what? And Tails wondered why she even had ears if she wasn't going to use them. Espio grabbed the invisibility hat from Tails' hands and said, Cool, thanks. And kept going so Sonic and Tails left and wished him luck from far away at their own homes. Back at home, Sonic thought that it would be good that Espio would get sex into Rouge, and then he could explain it to Sonic, and Sonic would know how to find Amy's sex spots even better, because otherwise, he would just have to read about it online, because all he knew about was kissing, which wasn't really sex, but it was probably kind of the same thing, and Sonic would just read about it online before talking about it anyway, and he would know the right words for the things then. Sonic sat on his chair and was in front of his Sonic computer, and opened up Sonic Instant Messenger, and messaged Amy, who was doing the same thing, but at her home, and said, Hey Amy, wanna finally become true boyfriend and girlfriend by reaching sex this weekend? 
Sonic waited for a long time at his computer, and it seemed like Amy was not there because she did not respond to anything. Sonic played games online and beat all of the final bosses because he was like an alien sent to Earth to destroy records set by others. And then finally, Amy responded. What Amy said was, No way! Sonic was shocked. His brain must have felt like a total idiot. The story just keeps getting weirder the longer it goes on, but uh, yeah, that's where this episode is going to end. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you're enjoying this whatever it is. If you are, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I have a Ko-Fi and I have a merch store. They help support this channel. You can check those out. I also have a subreddit, r slash moonhorse stories. You can send me whatever weird thing you'd like to send me. Stories you wrote, stories you found, just anything. Send it there. There's also a live stream every Saturday. You can come check that out. And uh, that's, yeah, that, that's it. Be careful when you do on the sex, everybody. I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> Goodbye.